Rim brake versus disc brake. It's an age-old battle that rages on and goes backwards and forth between the lovers and the haters of each different braking system. So I thought I'd sit down and look at a few key areas to decide how each different braking system stacks up. No faffing about, no marketing stats. We're gonna keep it simple and clean. In each of the different areas I'm gonna take a look at, I've compared at least three different brands' products on a like-for-like -like basis to see what the deal is. But remember, there's always gonna be exceptions or products which buck the trend. So first up, let's take a look at the cost of buying a complete group set. Across the three major group set manufacturers, on average, it will cost you about £230 more to buy a disc-equipped group set. Not a significant difference, you might say, in the grand scheme of buying your bikes, but it is a difference and it's something to take note of. Next up, is about having a look at the overall group set weight. Now, comparing like-for-like -like products and the same setups, on average, you'll find that a rim brake group set allows you to save around 95 grams of overall weight from the group set of your bike. Again, not significant, but it is a small saving. Arguably the most important area to consider is the performance of the braking system. Well, for me, it's certainly the most important thing. Your brakes are there to slow you down for safety. So it's no good having some crazy lightweight brakes if they simply don't slow you down effectively. In the dry, there really is minimal difference in out and out performance between rim brakes and disc brakes. Whilst I've not conducted any scientific experiments to test this out, I feel it's realistic that within human error, the differences between the two systems can be accounted for in the dry. In the wet though, I do feel it is a different story. Anyone that has used rim brakes in the wet will know that that first initial period when you apply the brake and the pad is clearing the water off of the braking surface, it can be a little bit of a scary moment. Now, the overall performance will vary depending on the type of rim brake wheels and the pads that you're using, but I think it's fair to say that in almost all conditions when you're using disc brakes, you do have a fairly consistent and dependable brake performance, whereas with a rim brake bike, you do have performance that alters depending on the conditions that you're riding in. Next up is wheel weight and cost. Now, across the selection of different wheels that I took a look at, on average, there were comparable prices between rim brake wheels and disc brake wheel sets across a number of different brands and products. But there were a couple of instances where the disc brake wheel set was in the realms of 100 to 150 pounds or euros more expensive. But you can probably expect, it's fair to say, you've got plenty of choice where you've got a comparable price between the two different braking types. And in terms of the weight, it was a similar, similar deal here. There were some instances where the weight between a rim brake wheel set and a disc brake wheel set was comparable and some brands, they're almost identical. But there are a number of different reasons that you need to shop around because some brands give you the option of saving around 30 to 40 grams by using a disc brake wheel set over their rim brake one. However, there are also manufacturers where a disc brake wheel set was in the region of sometimes 100 grams heavier. So in terms of the wheel set you choose and the weight saving or gain for your bike, if you shop around and choose carefully, it could be an area where you could save some weight. And the best advantage of using a disc brake wheel set over a rim brake one is that you're not gonna be wearing away at the expensive carbon wheels when you apply the brakes because all the braking is done on that disc brake rotor. On to the frames next, and do bear in mind that I'm talking about the frames only, not the frame sets, which would include the forks. Now, the weight of frame sets is gonna vary vastly depending on whether you look at a real top spec bike or maybe even a more entry level spec bike. But from my research, I found that on average, a disc brake frame is about 70 grams heavier than this rim brake equivalent when we're comparing like for like, for example. And this was based across mid-range and high spec bikes, so it may well vary significantly differently for lower or entry-level spec bikes. And the reason behind this is to do with the added strength and reinforcement that is added to the frame in order to accommodate the load and forces that are put through it through the disc brake canopers. 
There are, however, lots of manufacturers out there with uh, improvements in technology and the changing of some UCI ruling that are having their rim brake frame sets and disc brake frame sets coming in at close to within 10 grams of each other. So shop around and it could be an area where you can have free reign to pick and choose whichever you like. On to aerodynamics next. Now, some time ago, Ollie himself completed some tests using a rim brake bike and a disc brake bike at the Silverstone wind tunnel to see how they stacked up against each other. Now, bear in mind, this was some time ago, so technology and stuff might have moved on a little bit from then, but I've got the results of his experiment here in front of me. So, Ollie's experiment showed that a rim brake bike with a rider when ridden at 35 kilometers an hour, it was 13 watts faster. And if you increase that speed up to 45 kilometers an hour, there's a rim brake bike saving of 16 watts. Now, if you're comparing the bike by itself, because those numbers were a bike with a rider on, then the numbers do change slightly. So a rim brake bike only at 35 kilometers an hour was only three watts faster than a disc brake bike. And at 45 kilometers an hour, the rim brake bike by itself was seven watts faster than a disc brake bike. So there is an aerodynamic advantage to be had using a rim brake system. Is it significant? No, unless you're really competing at the top end of a sport where every single watt makes a big difference. But for you and I, it's not gonna be a big deal. Service life and longevity next, and this is an area where I feel disc brakes have a distinct advantage. They require less maintenance and in general terms will have a longer service life. Disc brake pads themselves will last longer than rim brake ones. This is due to them being made of a different and tougher material. And when you compare in hydraulic and cable systems, for example, there's much less maintenance to be performed on a hydraulic system, meaning that a hydraulic disc brake bike could be set up and left as a bit more of a fit and forget system. When washing a bike, both brake systems need to avoid having grease, oil or lubrication. Now that's just common sense. Your brakes work by generating friction to help slow you, the rider, down. So why would you want to get a product on the braking system that's designed to reduce friction? It just makes no sense. Last section now, and in terms of rider input, a disc brake system requires less force when pulling the lever than a rim brake system does. It's not that a rim brake lever is particularly tough or hard to pull in any way at all. It's just that a disc brake lever has a very slightly lighter action. This means it could be great for people with small hands or particularly weak hands, or maybe even people with a disability or a hand impairment, for example. It also serves as quite a confidence booster for people that might be slightly nervous on the bike because having the ability to not have to put lots of force through the brake lever does instill that extra bit of confidence in you as a rider. So with all that information in mind, I'm keen to hear your thoughts on which type of braking system you would choose and why, so you can let me know in the comments section down below. But I think there's a fairly balanced argument in terms of both systems having some pros and cons. It's simply a case of trying to decide which aspect and area of braking performance and the system that's most important to you, and then choosing accordingly to that. But what bike would I choose? Well, if I was still racing, I would choose a rim brake bike and maybe have a disc brake bike for training on or racing in wet conditions. But if I could only choose one bike, I would 100% choose a disc brake bike. I feel it offers the advantages in most of the areas and characteristics that are most important to my everyday cycling. And it would seem that manufacturers and brands are investing most of their resources in technology and development into refining and honing the disc brake system. And as such, it would appear that disc brakes are the future. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a big thumbs up. And why not let me know your thoughts on rim brakes versus disc brakes in the comments section down below. I am really keen to hear everyone's different views. And remember, subscribe to GCN Tech for all things bike tech. See ya.